Some days don't quite go our way, but there's always something interesting that happens on a trout stream. We had a few hours on a tiny flow spring creek, and we found five nice brown trout to focus on. These provided opportunity to learn, relearn, and share in the subtle art of stalking Spring Creek brown trout. you find value in our free sharing of knowledge and experience and want to support us? Gain access to our extended length ad-free videos as well as our in-depth producer's notes that turn every video into an in-depth fly fishing class. Join our Patreon group today. Okay, so we're out here on a beaver pond and it was dead calm and there's three browns sitting right on the bottom and we didn't cast until the wind kept up or we didn't have a chance until the wind came up and the idea was just to cast at the fish station where they are when the wind picked up to cover your plop of your dry dropper now brian just missed a fish that came up to a small size 18 nymph and i'm just tied on a large pheasant tail because it could be a a, a big scud it could be a dragonfly damselfly a minnow that kind of thing now it's only 18 inches below his small dry fly and you go, how's that gonna support it? It's not. What Brian's gonna do now is he's gonna use that uh, elk hair caddis, the oversized elk hair caddis, a little size 14, 12 on 2X shank as an indicator. This nymph is gonna sink his dry fly, but we don't care. We're gonna watch the fish's mouth and we're gonna watch the dry fly when it sinks as an indicator. So either which way we still have two indicators, the fish's mouth, and the sunken dry fly. And now the wind's still up, we're gonna give it a go again. So swing it to your left. There you go, perfect man. Is he moving? Yeah, he's moving. Yeah, 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 yeah! Perfect! Nice. That's the sunken dry fly indicator. Now strip, strip, get off the reel. This is a case where you have to strip around that sticks. I missed a third and you have to strike it. No. That was awesome, man. Good job. <laughs> the old sunken indicator with the large pheasant tail nymph, eh? Oh, God. If you're dealing with 12 inches to the dry fly, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> Wicked. That's all right. Just like that. So Dave, that worked really well. I really appreciate your advice on that. That was a fantastic call. My question is, as a you know earlier fly fisher, this is a smaller fly, and my inclination would have been to use a bigger fly on top, and that way I think I would be better able to see it be taken and dropped down. So why this size fly and not bigger? Okay, so when we walked in, this pond behind us was flat calm. There was absolutely no wind. And you had a little size 14, size 16 El Caracatus with a long leader to basically work the water well without spooking the fish. I then said, no, I think because the entire way we walked in, we didn't see a rise. That told me that chances are pretty good we're gonna get a fish on the dropper. So I actually changed from your small caddis to kind of a medium sized sedge, kind of a size 12 um, El Caracatus. And then we saw the wind pick up and the fish were sitting there. There's in this well just off of this beaver hut, beaver lodge, there's a depth probably about what, four feet, five feet deep? It was deep. Yeah. Then the wind picked up. Okay. So now you got a place where we had to go deeper. You missed the first take. I knew that fish was going to come and eat because it was a sparkly little nymph. So the fish came up, ate, and set the hook. Oop, pop, missed. Yes. Now we got a situation where we don't know if that fish that you just hooked was the one you're going back after or it was a different fish and I thought well he's not gonna eat the same thing twice on flat water everything so the reason I didn't change this is because well as we've seen this wind has come and gone twice since we've been here flat as a pancake then wind why change this at all if the conditions are gonna keep coming back and forth back and forth this on a light long leader is still gonna float and land nicely it's just a matter of what this is going to do. This big heavy, I've got a triple wrap, lead wrap on this size eight pheasant tail. Well, we knew at the time that we were fishing, we could do, we could throw rocks on that water because of the wind. That wind chop gives you all the cover yeah. all day long. And this is white. 
white on that color is going to indicate. I don't care if this is three feet down, you're going to see this. So Good I don't point. care what this does. This is an indicator whether it's sitting on top or if it's three feet down. And in that case, we cast out, that fish came up, and I thought it was going to eat the dry fly on both cases. It didn't. It ate the dropper. And it came over and ate this, and suddenly the white little thing went that way, and that's when you set the hook. So it's irrelevant. It's still functioning it's as an indicator. It's functioning as an indicator. Yes, So that's, point. that's the long-winded answer to a, a real simple question, but it's an important question because, yeah. oh, I have to change anything, everything. Well, I don't have to change everything because th you can see this. Yeah. And you also notice that this has got a half-inch long tag end off that fly. I don't care about that. It's early season. We yeah. just talked to the landowners again. This is why you always talk to people, talk to the landowners. Has anybody been around? No. A friend of mine came three weeks ago that said there's no fish in here. I, I know better. I've been fishing this creek for 30 years. I know there's fish here. Yeah. So do I care about a tag in on fish that haven't seen people? No. Go fishing and make it quick. That's the other thing. Make it quick. I don't yeah. care about chopping a tag end off. I don't care if I sink this. No, the fish are there, they're active. Get on them while they're here before those six suckers that we saw yes. down there swim through <laughs> and everybody's screwed. Perfect. So, so that's a long-winded answer, but just feed the fish. Great advice. Has he moved? No, he's still there. Okay. Looks like a fish. I think so too. It looks brown. Might be a bit high, but at least get down to him. Yeah. Oh, 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 is he moving? No. Bring it back before I get blown the other way. Yeah. Wow, I can't, he needs, he needs to move to yeah. confirm that's a fish, to be honest. Yeah, here oh, here he, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Yep, 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 yep. got him, nice. Woo! All right. Good eye, Dave, yep, he moved. He moved, woo, woo, woo. Wicked awesome. That's that awesome. That was nice. With that fly. Like, yep. Yeah, that was off. awesome. <laughs> yeah, man. Sweet. But you saw even I doubted it briefly, I right? Know. So, yeah. First cast. Okay, one. Just had to wait, Kate. I was 100% on it. Being Hank clear. Dave. You going to talk gonna, about the netting? Going to try to bring it back to you here. So that's a fold, right? That's, that's a fold and yeah, up. up. Nope. No, and up. Yeah, yeah nice, Dave. Fold. Thank so you. you take and then you bring the head up and around. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it, there's a lot of, you see there's a lot of movement of the rod yeah. back and forth, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. So, so on this wind behind, it's not windy now, and that's exactly the point about this. The wind comes and goes. But when the wind was up and I was leading, I'm going to raise bank. What am I looking for to find the fish that Amelia just caught? Well, it was a, it was a, there's hardly any flow, but there is flow. It's kind of like a lake actually has flow, even though it's a lake, uh, there are currents. And in this case, it's still downstream in this back channel of a river with basically fed by a spring creek. There's still flow. So I'm looking for an upstream torpedo shaped smudge on the bottom. And when I saw it, I was like, yeah, no, it's got lower fins. And Amelia and Brian were like, are you sure that's a fish? No, that's a fish. I just didn't know if it was a sucker or a brown. And, and I, was wait, yeah. I was waiting for the movement because, you know, whenever you're sort of deciding if something's a fish or not, you typically also want to see a bit of movement, right? And I hadn't seen any movement and you could hear me saying that and even sort of second guessing after I had cast. But it was all about waiting for that drift to get just a little bit closer for that fish to pick up on my nymph and to come over and eat. And the other thing I wanted to say here, guys, is that, you know, I actually thought I had slightly overcast to that fish too, too initially. Long, right? Too long a cast where I potentially could have lined it. But the reality was in the end when I looked back at what was happening and how successful I was on that fish was the fact that it is deep here. And in a way, the fact that I did maybe cast it a foot or two further than I originally thought was great was actually a good thing because it allowed that nymph to get down, down and it allowed me a slightly longer drift and time for that trout to just come over and see it and eat it. Because he would have come up three feet off the bottom to eat that nymph and it was really cool so now it again it's an optical thing oh i've cast too far wait a second no you probably didn't it's all going to swing and pendulum down in and that fish just came over and said thank you kindly yep well guys we've just spotted a, a big fish that's cruising in between these two logs and i mean he's just got the pick of this whole 
sort of widening and deepening of this spring and the guys are just ahead of me and they're looking to see the spot that we can potentially film this and even have a chance at getting a decent cast to this fish. So from where Brian and I are sitting is just this branch right here that's across. The fish is just up and it's angled like that because there's a deflection off that stump and the, even though there's no current in here, there's still current from a fisher's perspective. So it hits that stump across and comes this way and he's facing right into it, which is a 30 degree thing. Don't forget this fish had already cycled through here. Down over here, he's gone up to his feeding position, resting feeding position. And do we go after him here by putting the cast off the right? Or do we wait for him to cycle again, wait for him to go down, pre-cast out here and trust it in the middle of the pocket that way if we put it in the middle that fish comes up if it goes to the right we can pull it back if it goes a little bit to the left we can kind of wiggle it and get his attention um if this fish was doing anything if there's any bugs anything happening i would say let's just cast over here and let him eat but i'm also pretty tempted to say you know what let's wait and right now to answer brian's question from earlier is how do you know if a fish is you know, by its body behavior, if it's doggo uh, or done, it's dead still, but we know it's just resting. We observed him. It's, it's doing nothing, but it's still feeding. You can still see that tail just going like this, but it's doing nothing. When we're fishing and we see that, and a fish has moved and it does that, we think, oh, we spooked it. Maybe, maybe not. This fish is just naturally going like this. And when that sun comes out, sometimes that's enough to get the fish moving again. But, um... Yeah, it's fluid. He's happy. You know, a few feet off to his oh, right. Oh, see the other fish coming down him. off his right? Two feet to his right, there's another fish. Oh, see yeah. the female? Oh, yeah. oh, boy. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay. And the 14 incher is still up to subsurface by the weed bed. So now it gets interesting. Now you have, now you have the puzzle. And that female is much smaller than that male. Oh, yeah. As we turned into the proper channel of this spring, We've long known this wiggle around the old stump as a prime spot to hold a big brown. Trouble is that with one-third normal flow due to prolonged drought, we quickly saw a second brown drop out near our target. Browns have to move to available habitat, and in this kind of water, that is seldom less than waist deep, and usually congregates numbers of fish. As Brian cast, yet another trout appeared due to the disturbance, and once you disturb one fish, you disturb the lot. Now you have to choose to wait an hour or so for them to settle back into their positions or move upstream to find another fish. We tried to use that stump as cover to not be seen, but that one cast at the wrong time sealed the deal. We moved up to the next flat and found one active and one doggo brown trout. Or at least we thought it was doggo. Again, what we project isn't always true. As Brian cast to what he thought was the active brown moving upstream, it did a territorial chase of the supposed doggo brown and itself took the resting lie. The one that we projected to be doggo then swung around 180 degrees and came downstream at us. As it did, it ate Brian's dropper nymph straight at him. The angle of the eat and the delay in the dry fly indicating conspired and he missed the set. Well guys, we got a nice fish that's holding up on the spring ahead of us here. And he's not doing a whole lot. Um, possibly nymphing left right but his window is pretty narrow from what we can see from here and he, there's no sign of him rising on top but I am going at him with a dry dropper mostly expecting him to come for the nymph um, we're gonna give it a go here I'm definitely gonna cast my fly off to his left again this is situation super calm calm water you can see right in front of me here 
little to no movement on it. He's right out, right out in here. And yeah, you, you know, basically I'm looking for some kind of lateral line eat when that nymph plops in the water and we'll see if he wants to come over and, and take it. So there's odd bits of glare at certain angles. Like right now, I don't have a really good view of him. I had a better view off of my left here, but I also want to get down and a little closer to this fish and make sure that I have a decent back cast because off my left is a whole bunch of taller spruce trees. Okay, now I have a better view of where he is. All right, I'm gonna go for it here. See what that does. No, no sign yet. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Oh, here he comes, here he comes. And, ooh, he looked, I got his attention. He's moving. Okay, I'm gonna pick that up and plop it again. It's on. Here we go. No, I'm gonna go again. No. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Is he gonna turn? No, he's restationed. Okay, fair enough. I'm gonna go large pheasant tail now. This fish shares the difference between Amelia and I. If I get the sense that a fish is still fluid and not spooked, I'll camp on it and feed it until it eats my fly. My spidey sense works extremely well for me. I'm obsessive. Amelia is more relational, and given that our friend Brian was with us, she didn't want to camp out on a fish and eat his fishing time. What you're about to see is me frustrated, wanting Amelia to be a predator, and Amelia wanting to give wave relationally. And it unfolded about as you'd expect. Yeah, no kidding, right? Well, what do you want me to try here? Well, here's the thing. This is where I do consider every... Well, no kidding, but I mean, come on. Yeah, I know. But the point is, I... Oh, yeah. Oh, that might have been me. Yeah, that was me. I said it. I know. Just a second. He might eat this. After that unneeded miss, we all bought in to go at this big brown. It was almost unspookable, so Amelia changed flies a dozen more times, and its curiosity led it to inspect every fly before refusing. It eventually took one more eat straight at her, and it didn't connect on the set. We moved upstream to find an old friend, a gorgeous big old brown that Amelia and I have both caught a few times the past few years. But it was bright sun and Brian was refused on a big dry fly with a medium dropper on 3x and then again on a larger caddis as the fish cycled and then spooked off to an undercut. We fished our way upstream and in the evening on our walk out we stopped to see if this fish was active. Amelia and Brian found it feeding once more, and since neither had their rods set up, I had a go. Of course. No, I am. Of course, now the wind's picking up. You know? Yep. Yeah. 
Where is it in relation? No, no, I'm to me. In the middle or along shore? Okay. I've got him. There we go. Little twitch, skitter. See if he comes. He's got. He's on it. He's on it. Yeah, that was the beautiful set of lips we all wanted to hear, wasn't it? Yeah, that'd be great. That was the beautiful set of lips we all wanted to hear. Wow, well gorgeous fish. There we go. Here, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Thank you. Sorry to be particular, but just trying to keep him from getting into this stuff here. He's not done. Now he knows he's hooked. That's a big fish, I think. Yeah, I think he's grown since you caught him last year, love. It's a really small caddis fly, too. Uh, it's not over yet. He's going straight for that structure down there. Yeah, that's trouble. And I don't know if I can turn him on 5X on a size 16 caddis. Bit of a soft stalemate there. Come on, bud. Fold. Yeah, we recognize this fish. Jeez, what a fish. Okay, yeah, net back up. He still wants that tree, and he might still get me. I'm just gonna stand here like a tree and see if he comes to me. It's on 5X on a size 8, 16 elk hair caddis. So I'm just biding my time at this point. Come on. Pause you, buddy. Right there. See how I'm holding my rod upstream to try to offset him completely. I'm reaching my arm out. But that's the... Oh, the pause. The pause without a fold when the fish keeps going. But I don't like that because I want to fold it, fold it, and right here, there we go. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Well done, That's a gorgeous fish. Look well at that. Done. Yeah, it's a touch bigger than last year, maybe, but huge. That's a monster fish. Okay, so if you've followed our channel, you've seen that fish before. About one year and two days ago, Amelia caught that fish. And earlier today in the bright sun, we came through and Brian was just over here. And he was using, I want to say, either 3 or 4X on a size 12 sedge in the bright sun. And that fish kind of would not commit to looking at his fly. And eventually spooked off because maybe a flash of, of reflection of the sun on his reel. So this time... And we saw the rise on the way back. And what we did was we said, okay, we fished through the day and we went and had some fun looking at fish further upstream in another really big flat pond in this creek. And it is now 20 to 7. And on the way back, we said, well, I got to have a look. And sure enough, that same fish that Brian was working earlier was here. And I was just going to flip out a beetle. And I thought, no, Dave, take the time. Just take the time. So I said, okay, I'm going to go. Uh, I, I'd had a seven foot leader from a streamer, so I worked it up to 14 feet, 15 feet, down to 5X, and I tied on a little size 16 uh, elk hair caddis. And I did those things because Brian was a little bit thicker and a little bit bigger in the afternoon in the bright sun. So why don't you just double down and double improve and do what's needed, get small. And Amelia and Brian were up on the bank looking for me, telling me where the fish was, 10 feet off the off this bank that I was sitting on. I was upstream of this spruce right in here. And I was just giving myself a window to waiting for that fish to arrive. I cast across the creek. Why did I do that? So I could pull it back because I didn't know exactly where the fish was gonna be. Cast it across, twitch, 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 skitter that caddis back. And as soon as I saw that fish break, I stopped skittering. As soon as I, I saw that fish cruising like, just like this to this, suddenly beelining it for my fly, I stopped. And I knew that fish was going to come up. Sure enough, he just comes up, 
and those beautiful brown traps the brown trout lips and wait for the head to go down set the hook but you can set a lot of directionality and just adjust pay attention to what didn't work earlier in the day go back and and, sh uh, and lengthen up lighten up and drop your hook size cast across a little further pull it back to where the fish is get its attention as soon as you have that attention stop let it eat away we go